are now taking over the airwaves. This is Ultimate You Radio. We are here to create extraordinary change through mindset, nutrition, and training. Life is way too short not to be the ultimate version of you. Alrighty, gang, welcome. We're having a chat. We're just having a chat. We're down here at Ultimate You HQ. Welcome to, I guess, the first episode of the UI Way podcast mm. for the year. And we're really excited. We're going to be talking some amazing stuff, of course. And we have the amazing Jenna, the UI nutritionist. Say hello. Hello, how are we all going? And then of course the head of mindset, Kimbo. G'day guys, how's it all going? So of course we are filming this for our podcast and YouTube, but we've also got the live stream happening and uh, you're going to be in the group, our fit fans on there. If you've got questions as we talk guys, feel free, I'm here monitoring uh, the questions. If you've got something to say, let us know and we can rock and roll. Yes. So what are we talking about today? We are talking about the UI philosophy, nutrition, mindset, and training. Yeah, which is so dear to our hearts, right? So, as you guys know, our core philosophy and how we change so many lives, it's based around mindset, nutrition, and training. This is a philosophy, hey Audrey, this is a philosophy that we've been teaching for a very, very long time, one that gets outstanding results. And I think that, I remember when we uh, really solidified this concept, it was, it was looking at what's missing in the industry, why aren't people getting the best results long term, right? And of course, for me, a huge part, the missing link was mindset, right? Even when you start looking at the science of nutrition and training, which is so crucial, if the mindset's not there, you're not gonna be able to sustain it, you're not gonna be able to stick to it. And then of course with nutrition, such an incredible, incredible concept, mm. but it's developing so so fast, it changes all the time, doesn't it? Yeah. So you've got to be really up to date with everything, which is why we have an expert uh, <laughs> running the department, and same with our mindset department. Mm. And, uh, and one thing I'm really proud of here at Ultimate U is that we're constantly at the forefront of all of those topics, mindset, nutrition, and training, so we can deliver the best to our community and, uh, and, and get the best results. So let's talk about how this philosophy, and everyone watching right now and listening, can how they can implement this into 2018 so they can make it the best year yet. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. It's a new year. We've probably got new goals, new, uh, new wants and needs and things that we want to achieve. But how are we really going to make this year different to the rest? Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? It starts with mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, nutrition's my life, but if you don't have the mindset and the commitment and the dedication to even try and start something new towards your why and your goal, then that's the missing yeah, key. Yeah. yeah, you really have to get that mindset sorted before mm. you can start implementing the nutrition. Mm. Now, of course, nutrition is what makes you feel good and spurs on that momentum, mm. but I think mindset is definitely what gets you started. Would you agree? Yeah, and there's a lot of pressure on my end, obviously, because we got to deliver the best mindset content for mm -hmm. everyone mm -hmm. and make sure everything's up to date because it really does start with mindset and, mm -hmm. and I mean I totally agree with what you said it's that philosophy behind mm -hmm. UI was that key missing thing of the thinking the, the mindset mm -hmm. and, and you know you can go on these diets you can go mm -hmm. on like you can do all these exercises lose weight and then you end up putting it back on let's say because your mindset wasn't right yeah. which is mm -hmm. what drew me in I mean I don't know you yeah, do. definitely. It's not you have to have a mindset of a lifestyle change, mm. yeah. and, and you want to feel good for life. You want to wake mm. up feeling good yeah. every day, not just for six weeks mm. or not just for four weeks. And that's where it's key and it makes is a game changer. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think it, it is a difference that makes a difference. But in saying that, it's it, everything is so connected, and that's mm. why it's a beautiful thing. But as we said, it's a difference that makes a difference because if you are going from losing 10, 20, 30 kilos, even less, not only does your body have to change, but your identity has to change. And if you don't shift your identity, that internal map and vision of who you are, that's why people go back to their old ways. They will get quick results and they'll lose some weight, but they will then start to put it back on mm. because they see themselves as that old person. And I mean, there's layers to that. There's the self-leadership element, leadership mm. element. There's the um, identity element. There is staying motivated and inspired through the tough times element. Yeah. So how do you build resilience? How do you build mental toughness? How do you shift your identity, create a vision worth fighting for? That's 
really what we're good at here at yeah. Ultimate You, yeah. and that's why mindset is so freaking important. If you're listening and you love it, make sure you comment, hit the love heart, hit the like. Makes me feel good about myself. <laughs> I don't know about you. Yeah, and uh, sure. and comment. We're here to ask questions as well. Yeah. So with the mindset side of things, let's talk about that. Then let's talk about nutrition. But again, we cannot forget how connected they are because yeah. you know I've been doing the mindset nutrition training game for a long time. So I've been teaching it for over 10 years. And what, what I've found, even with myself, is that no matter how much I learn and how deep I go into this, I still have my ups and downs as well. Mm-hmm. And if one's off, it absolutely impacts mm-hmm. the other. Mm-hmm. So I can be practicing my morning rituals, doing my goal setting, my vision, really amping myself up mentally. But if I'm eating shitty food, mm-hmm. which believe it or not, I do sometimes, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm not a freak, but I do have I do have my down times as well. And when I do, I feel it, right? Yeah. The sugar, the oxidized fats, I feel it the next day, and that inhibits my motivation, my energy, mm. and really holds me back from being the best version of myself. We often have these chats about yeah. the impact. Yeah, and I think it goes back to your default mechanism. So if you um, have if you have a week of just eating whatever you want, and you do end up feeling mm. crappy, it's not that. Um, you, it's not a direct relation to the food and it's not a direct relation to the mindset. As you said, it's all intertwined. And I think if you have your nutrition on point and if you have your mindset on point, when things do get tough, Mm. it's easier to um, cope and manage and game plan and strategize out of that situation on how to grow and learn and develop. Mm. But if you've got, if you're not getting enough sleep, if you don't have those mindset tools in place and if your nutrition's poorly and you're lacking that energy your stamina and your positivity isn't at that level Mm -hmm. that gets you above the line and out of that tricky situation when it's stressful and we see it with our clients all the time Mm -hmm. like they Mm -hmm. say I I can just cope better Mm -hmm. the stress hasn't changed but my mindset has changed and the way I feel and can cope in this situation has changed yeah I think uh, the nutrition side of things is what really actually gives you that energy it's I mean it's 80% Mm. of your, your, what you need to do, the twenty percent is training, of course, and exercise. But nutrition is what gives you that life energy mm. to then be able to use for everything else. Mm. Like that's why I, I think the education that you've been doing, um, doing the nutrition mastery, mm. uh, has been awesome because it has just up leveled what I know about my own nutrition, so that I can fuel myself mm. to do everything that I need to do. Mm. Uh, so it's so so that's why I it's so awesome and so yeah. connected. Mm. At, yeah, without the nutrition side, you just, you might have the, the mindset to sort of think about your dreams and your goals, but you're not going to have the fuel to mm. actually go ahead and do it. And then let's think about what it takes to, to get in and be a warrior and train five days a week. Mm. Now, it takes, it's not easy, right? As all of you guys listening know, <laughs> and we do it day in and day out, but how can we get into uh, the Ultimate Change Center and, and kick ass and train hard if we don't have energy because our nutrition's off and our mindset is completely in uh, in victim mentality or in a, in a different mm. zone. If we don't have mindset and nutrition lined up properly, then we're not going to be the best we can be training. But as we know, that affects every other part of life. You can't be the best in your finances, in your mm. career, mm. in your relationships if you are not in peak health. Yeah. And that's why I love what we do so much because it impacts every area of your life. Um, and that's what people really need to, I think, recognize as well. When they're on this journey, don't just look at your belly. Don't just look at the scales, right? Mm. Look at how it is affecting your confidence. How is it affecting your energy, yeah. your relationships, your social time, all those different parts of life that mean so much to us. Really take the blinkers off and see the power behind living the ultimate version of you because that's when life really becomes incredible right yeah absolutely and I think what you were going back to what you were saying how to if you're not in that right mindset and if you're not your nutrition isn't optimal how do you get started and how do you keep going and that's where our programs are so good because you have a group of people that you're starting with and they're you're accountable to them and you have these sub, like 100 people or more supporting you to keep going when it gets tough and going through the same thing as you and that community aspect and that camaraderie is so so integral to long lasting long term results yeah, yeah. But when you say warrior like what's what kind of warrior do you need to be mm. when you're just one person one warrior you're not going to be very effective mm. but yeah. as a community as what i call like a tribe mm. we're going to win win wars we're going to win <laughs> yeah. not that yeah. we 
advocate war, but <laughs> we're, we're going to win those um, results that we want together. Yeah. And, and, and you know, you don't have to feel like you're alone in doing it mm. because everyone's doing the same thing as you, going through the same journey. Mm -hmm. You know, first of weight loss, and then it just becomes about the other cool parts of your life. You know, mm -hmm. and, and you're a warrior with all us. All of us, all mm. of the other warriors around here. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely. There's always another level. There's always <laughs> another level. No matter how good you think you're getting at this game of yeah. mindset, nutrition, training, yeah. there's always another level you can take it. And that's what I love yeah. about this journey. It's constant mm. and never-ending improvement. Yeah. And uh, and that's what gets me going. And that's why I'm so passionate about sharing with our community because, you know, I see we see thousands of people coming through our doors, and every one I can see that there's just so much more potential that then that's been tapped into currently. Yeah. And if we can bring that out of people or help facilitate that change, then I think that's the, the best feeling in the world and that's mm. why we do what we do, right? That's what we're all about. That's what we're all about. Mm. Boom. So, let's talk about mindset quickly, then let's yeah. talk about nutrition. Yeah. So, I've got four points. I mean, we could talk for hours mm. about how to add mindset nutrition training into your life. And of course, if you're part of our community, You've got all these awesome resources, which is terrific. And if you're not part of our community, you better get into it very quickly. <laughs> but, um, but let's talk about four points that I think will really help everyone just get a bit of mindset or, or clarity around mindset into mm. their 2018 uh, prep. And then we can connect some nutrition and training mm. to it, yeah? Mm -hmm. So number one, I think it's really important, and, and let me know what you guys think, that from the get go, you're setting clear, specific goals. We like to yeah. talk about change goals, don't we? Yeah. Because when we set goals, they can't just be your average goals. They can't be boring goals. Mm -hmm. Because average, boring, plain goals don't get you out of bed in the morning. And right? they get you average, plain, boring results. Exactly, yeah. right? So again, when we set goals, they've got to be exciting. They've got to wake you up in the morning because part of creating a compelling vision for your future and getting you out of bed at 5 a.m. when you don't want to get out of bed, it's got to be compelling. It's got to be something that outweighs the pain of getting up when you don't want to, yeah. it's got to outweigh that, right? It's got to excite you. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's, it's funny that you say that because I've got it highlighted here in my notes, like goals. Mm. Like goals is what you need to talk about. Mm. Because with your goal, it's, it's, it's where you want to get to. If, if you don't know where you're going, then you're going to wander around, get a bit lost, mm. and, and you're going to feel, probably feel like you're just wasting your time. But if you have clear goals in mind, then you're going to know where it is that you need to get to and then seek out answers on how to get there. And mm. again, like when you go on any sort of journey, if you know the hero's journey, if you've got a goal, if you know what you need to get mm. and you don't necessarily know how to get it, that's when you go and find someone who's done it already. Someone mm. and you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Someone's already done what you want them yeah. to do. So go find a, a mentor, a guide mm. that can show you the way, show you the steps, give you a system to follow so that then you can go ahead and go on your journey. Yeah, yeah. So. and I think that's something that, I don't know about what you guys think about this, but growing up, I always felt that it was wrong to model other people to copy other people, so to speak. But it's so integral. <laughs> How do you know and can visualize where you wanna go if you can't see it in front yes. of you and it's been done before? Yeah. And then you make it at your own. Mm -hmm. Reverse engineer your goal. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just, yeah, that concept of modeling, I think is so important as well because as you said, someone's done it before. So true. And I think one of the things to remember as well is that you've gotta set your goals and they gotta be excited and they gotta get you up in the morning. Mm -hmm. but writing them down once is not good enough like mm -hmm. everyone know i often speak about my ritual every day i go over my goals every day i'm getting that vision more and more ingrained in my heart and soul so it just keeps me fired up the whole way through so remember if you're setting goals make sure that you're reviewing them and getting passionate about them mm -hmm. daily it's yeah. a daily occurrence yeah. Um, they often say like with motivation, you know, it's like showering. You yep. need to do it daily, right? <laughs> yes. You need yeah. to do it daily because <laughs> yeah. it doesn't last. So you've got mm -hmm. to keep reapplying. Yeah. We've got a question from Jules. This is sort of linked into what we're saying. How do you, thanks for the question, Jules. How do you push forward and stay motivated in your training when you can tell your fellow warriors are frustrated by your lower level of fitness? I hate taking longer than everyone else or being unable to exercise, so having to do something else. I feel like I'm holding them back. It's screwing with my focus. So, great question, Jules. Thank you. And the first thing I think we should address is that, number one, although you probably feel like 
people are getting frustrated. Often, that's just your perception. And again, not saying you're right or wrong, but what we're trying to say is that the community that we have here at Ultimate You, I don't know what facility you're at, but I know that every one of those warriors has been exactly where you are right now. Mm. They've felt that. They've been in the place where they haven't felt fit. They haven't felt like they can uh, really lift the bar, I guess, the same as some of those fitted guys. So love yourself a little bit more and take the pressure off yourself because you're just starting a journey and you're going to find that within six weeks and then 12 weeks, your fitness, your mindset, everything will dramatically increase and, uh, and get a whole lot better the more you just focus on being the best version of you. Mm. You're not competing against anyone else mm. on the floor. You're just but competing yourself. against yourself yeah. daily. Yeah. So just set little goals for yourself and don't even worry about anyone else. Detach from that because this is about you. This is about your journey. And I promise you, 99.9999% of everyone out there <laughs> want to help you. They yeah. love you mm. and they want, to, they want you to be the best. Yeah? yeah. What do you guys yeah. say? Yeah, definitely. And I think also, um, can we talk a lot about this, about um, methods of communication? And body language is 75 Mm, mm. Yeah, a, a major part. A major, major part, part of yeah. how you communicate. And I don't know about you guys, but when I train, my face is like <laughs> stone focused, like yeah. sweaty. So I, I don't look like a very approachable person either. Um, it's not that I'm not what friendly they call it, they or call that resting bitch face. Resting bitch face. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's totally you how don't I that, train. By the way. You don't oh, know thank that. you. you I'm smiling like the whole way through. Yeah. <laughs> But um, I think like you, you can often look at someone and perceive a certain thing that they're thinking mm. or whatnot, and often it's just because they've got their resting bitch face on and mm. they're just working really, really hard. Mm. We are all here to support you and um, mm. yeah, being in our classes, I find anyway, so supportive no matter where you're at. Mm. Coming back from having a baby too, it's so um, daunting, like wherever you're at, um, it's daunting to get on that green and knowing mm. you've got your fellow camaraderie mm. warriors mm. there is so good to just be like and ask too I think um, I notice like if I'm out ever out in the gym and I'm struggling to pick a barbell up or something they'll come over and say hey yeah. Jenna can I help out and that's mm. what I love about mm. training here so sure. ask yeah put yourself yeah. out there too yeah I would say just immediately assume everyone here loves you oh, because yeah. 99.999 percent chance that everyone does like we mm. all let's are just, here to let's just tell the truth it's 100 percent. <laughs> we, we love you the, the community loves you yeah. and um we are sort of just do you know we're focused and we're doing our own things and i think that's why high fives are so important mm. in the classes because it just snaps you out of your your what you're doing yeah. to get back into the the tribe and say hey we're all so true we're, we're, mm. we're, we're doing our reps, we're doing our exercises, we're high together. five, mm. let's yeah. get back into it, mm. do our thing, mm. more high fives, mm. and it just reconnects you with the people in, in your classes. And, and those high fives just make sure that we are actually showing our love. Um, yeah. So yeah, just those high fives will indicate that love for you. Absolutely, and I think the last tip I'll just give you, Jules, before we move on is, find a buddy that's at a similar fitness level with you so you can do it together. Yeah. So you can, you've got a warrior, you've got a friend, and uh, even though you, you may feel a bit self-conscious sometimes, and trust me, everyone else is probably feeling the same way, um, have a buddy to help you along the journey. And then you can pair up with them and you'll feel equal, you'll feel uh, in line, and hopefully you feel a lot better. Mm, agree with that? 100%. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome. So back to our list of uh, mindset techniques. Number one is goal setting. Mm. It's just a non-negotiable for me. I don't know about you guys, but yeah. I think it's, it's got to be a daily practice. Yeah. Agree? In yeah. my diary, I've got full pages <laughs> of the day, and the yeah. top thing is always goal, and I know it off by heart. I just yeah. write it in there. Yeah. First I, in the morning. For me, I say it like a prayer. I guess oh. I was brought up as a Catholic, so mm. Mm. Um, that. for me, my, my vision, my goals. Still work you're going on on a day-to-day -day <laughs> yeah. basis. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of guilt. <laughs> but um, that's that's overcome by actually achieving my goals mm. and just reciting it in my head. This is the first thing I do mm. in the morning mm. as I wake up, other than you know, to yeah. obviously tell my partner I love her, and mm. then just just this is what I want mm. to do today. Awesome. I really love that morning. too because for you, that's a auditory thing. Mm. Whereas for us, it's a visual thing. So find out what your method is too. Like I know I'm 100%, I'm visual all the way. So writing for me is really effective. But if saying it like a prayer is more effective for you, mm. like understand that aspect of it as well, I guess. And yeah, do what works for you. What works for yeah. you. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Number two on my top four 
Number two is surround yourself with freaking epic people, right? Mm. Surround yourself with positive people, solutions focused people, people that are gonna lift you up and not pull you down. This is like my, this is one of my number one rules in life. Mm. Yeah. You know, I always say just cut the negativity out and surround yourself with great people because that will often either keep you on track or mm. completely take you off track. And I yeah. think for anyone starting this journey, anyone who's really at the early stages of transforming their life, um, and living the UI way, the biggest thing is is you've got to get away from the negativity. You've got to get away from people that are saying you can't do it or think that it's okay to uh, to just continually be unhealthy, etc. And when you surround yourself with like-minded warriors, and this is why our community is so powerful, because once you get around that, you're inspired to do more, be more, love more, all of those cool things. Mm -hmm. And that's why our team's so awesome, because we only select the best of the best, right? Yeah. We only select people with the same mindset. So. I'm always saying, surround yourself with great people and I think that in any goal that you have, in any facet of life, whether it's career, relationships, family, health and fitness, doesn't matter, to be successful, surround yourself with greatness. What do you guys think? I think you are the average of the five to seven people that you hang around with most. I think you've said yeah. that before and uh, that's 100% true. As soon as I started working here and getting amongst the community, I just felt my whole vibrancy mm. lift and, and you do, you want to strive to be more and you're encouraged to be more and in this massively positive, positive environment. Mm. I think in, in regards to your diet, I think that's specifically important because if you're the only one in the household yeah. who is um, eating healthy or on a new um, way of eating, mm. then it can be really yeah. daunting and it, it's hard hard yeah. to do that and I think the way around that is to just look at yourself as an inspiration to other people yeah. and that's often why people can get uncomfortable in the first place because you're starting something new and they're a little bit uncomfortable with mm -hmm. it so they present that opinion to you yeah. so you're actually being that inspiration to them so mm -hmm. take charge of that role I suppose and be like well hey you want to come cook with me let's meal prep together why don't you come to a session with me or whatever it is and, and understand that as well yeah I add to that because once you start to actually see progress in what you're doing mm. the people that are in your life that might be that ne negative influence let's say will start to actually give you some of that negativity because what you got to remember is it's not about you it's about them feeling really, I guess, insecure with themselves because they see you changing and transforming mm -hmm. and they're uncomfortable, they're scared that one, they might lose you and two, that they themselves aren't progressing yeah. and you know, you're sort of, they're starting to maybe feel a disconnect there but it's not about you, it's, it's really all about what they're feeling so you need to, when you're on this journey, just be aware of that and make sure that you know that what you're doing is good for you and good for the, the people that you really care about and the, the people that you love because that's what you're at the end of the day it's what you're doing this for right like you know for you so that you can love more you can be more mm -hmm. uh, so not about them not not about when their insecurities uh, arise it's, it, you just remember it's it's not about you it's about their insecurities. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's what makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, it's crucial. It's important. Because again, you cannot spend your life making decisions dictated by other people's opinions yeah. or their wants and needs. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're completely out of control. That's, again, the difference between a leader and a victim. So you got to make that choice and you've got to now, moving into 2018, you've cleared some, set some clear goals. Now it's time to absolutely surround yourself with mm. people with that winning mindset, with that positive attitude. So you can really push through those challenging times with a lot more ease, mm. right? Because that's what it's about. It's about, it's easy to be awesome in the good times, but how are you going to go in the tough times, in the challenging times? And let's not bullshit. We know there's going to be lots of it, right? Mm. We know that life is seasonal. You're going to have winters and you're going to have summers. Yeah. Some people like to snowboard in winter, other people are going to let it crush them and hide under the blankets, right? And you've got to just reframe every situation, yeah, yeah. but if you surround yourself with great people, you can reframe a whole lot quicker. Definitely, yeah. and you need the people that are not only going to support you in a positive way, but pull you up when you're being dramatic. Yes. Pull you up when you're being, um, you know, you're making excuses, when you're saying, oh, I don't have time to do this, when you're feeling down. Somebody's saying, oh, it's okay is not helpful when it's not going to help you get to your goals. So yeah. you really need those people to 
be able to pull you back into line and support you to where you need to go even when you're not feeling like you mm. want to do that. Yeah, I, one metaphor I like to use is if you're on a bus that you're driving on a, let's say, a 12-day trip, mm. who do you want on that trip with you that's, that's going to so go with you for the 12 days? Mm. And you know, mm. do you want people that encourage you, that pull you up again on, mm. on your bullshit? Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, tell you how awesome you're being when you're being awesome. Mm. Or do you want those negative people who sort of back backseat drive, like, and, and yeah, yeah, tell yeah. you you can't do this, tell you you're going the wrong way, mm. not offering any solutions? So mm. it's who's driving your bus and who do you want it on there? Mm. Right? That's yeah. that's a metaphor. I love like that. Absolutely. So yeah. So true. So true. So. Step one, set some clear goals, awesome, exciting goals. Step two, surround yourself with incredible people that are gonna lift you up. And, and number three, I've written, get clear on your uncompromising standards because I think it's so important because you can set goals, but if your standards don't match your goals as we teach in Mindset Mastery, then you're not gonna have any consistency. And uh, one thing me and Kimbo like to teach in, in Mindset Mastery is even when and except when, right? So with your standards, you can have a standard like, I'm going to eat clean seven days a week, except when I'm tired, except when it's raining, except when the but baby's going know. crazy, except <laughs> when, all of these except whens, right? And this yeah. is what most people's standards are riddled with. A million except whens, which means that anything that pops up, it'll absolutely corrupt their goal and their standards. Mm -hmm. The standards that we love here at Ultimate You are all based around even when, right? So you're gonna say, I'm gonna eat clean seven days a week, non-negotiable, even when I'm tired, even when it's cold, even when I'm going crazy, even when blah, 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 blah. And if you are set up and you're prepared, all your mm. even whens, all the yeah. setbacks that could possibly get in your way, you're gonna be so much more prepared for those challenging times, mm. which means mm. you're not gonna compromise on your standards and goals, which means you're gonna be successful. And that's the difference between ordinary and extraordinary. Mm. What do you guys think? 100%. Yeah, for, for standards, we talk about mm. raising our standards. Yeah. So when mm. you're doing one of the programs, especially like the transformation uh, nine in six, like mm. you are, if you're following the damn plan, you're raising your standards. Like mm. um, you are going from yeah. the, the even, uh, the except wins mm. to even wins. Yes. Um, if you follow the damn plan, if you stick to the nutrition plan, if you come mm. check in, for, you know, five days a week, minimum mm. to train mm. that's raising your standards mm. and sort of t uh, to fulfill the promise you've made to yourself mm. like at the end of the day it, like you can make promises to different people right but it's the ones that you make to yourself mm. that you don't keep you're going to lose trust within yourself yeah. and that's what's going to lower your confidence that's what's going mm. to sort of like kill yourself really slowly it's mm. like a really toxic thing to mm. to do so when you make a promise to yourself even if it's a small one then you have to keep that that's that's raising your standard yeah yeah, yeah definitely yeah, that's what i love about our program so what i love about you why and why we get just some crazy results here for example nine and six or muscle bikini or mindset mastery nutrition mastery mm. it is about we've structured the programs in a way that it almost forces you to lift your standards, mm -hmm. right? The accountability and the mechanisms are all in place to make it easier for you as a, as a newbie or someone coming into it to reprogram your standards because you have so much accountability, you've got a lot of things that you need to stick to and it's very well structured. So that mm -hmm. just helps you progress and grow and strengthen your standards faster than if you didn't have to commit to five days a week. And especially nine and six, if you didn't, you know what I mean? If you didn't, you know what's on the line. So yeah. you're so much more committed. Yeah. And, and again, that's why we get such incredible results. Katia, thank you for commenting. Foz, thank you so much, guys. If you're listening and you're loving it, comment, like, get involved. We love having you on board. Let's go through the list. Number one, set clear goals. Number two, surround yourself with epic people. Number three, get clear on your uncompromising standards. And number four, I've written down, ask Great questions. We often say the quality of your life will be determined by the quality of questions you ask yourself on a daily basis. But My what favorite. does this mean? What does it mean, right? So I've written a couple of notes here. What's a crappy question? A crappy question is, 
why me? Or why do I feel shit? Like, what, why, why, why? Moving into victim. What's a good quality question? Could be, how can I make this workout epic? What are three ways that I can make myself feel better right now? Yeah. The difference between asking quality questions and average lame questions is going to be the difference between your success. Because, again, one is helping you focus on solutions. The other mm -hmm. is making you focus on victim. Okay, and if you want to be a leader, if you want to improve and get better and better, you need to be in control of directing your thoughts and your mind so your behavior and actions follow. Mm. Yeah, what do you guys think about that? All you changed was that one word. Right? That's mm. it, one word. Just change that one word in front of the question yeah. from why to how. And mm. I think it just changes your whole mindset. Like if you're training and it's really hard and it's really painful, instead of Stating this is so hard why? or this is so, why is this so hard? Why am I so unfit? Ask how can I feel more? Yeah. How can I push through this? Mm. What would happen if I just sat with the pain? Mm. Where would it go? I love it. You know, ask those questions are so integral and you that, feel that shift, you right? Do. You ask that question, yeah. you feel the difference. One motivates you, one keeps you stagnant. Yeah, yeah, and one makes you realize it's actually really not that bad. Yeah. Like, it's, it's only yeah. 10 seconds, even if yeah. it feels like three minutes. Yeah, so true. Mm. Yeah. The way I like to sort of put questions and, and the good quality questions and bad quality is you, your brain is like a, a search engine, it's like a Google, mm. right? Whatever you type in, Whatever question you type in, that's the results that you're going to get. Yeah. Right. So you need to be really careful on what what questions you ask and how you phrase it. Like, what exactly you're focusing what you, on, right? Yeah, mm. because th it's exactly what you the question you ask is what your brain will actually try and find. Mm. Like it, it'll go through your database of memories and experiences and what you know, your knowledge, right? And try and we'll find that answer for you. So it's whatever you are focusing on is what you're going to get. Yeah. So make sure you're asking the right question, the mm -hmm. question that's going to help you out. It's going to give you a positive solution. Mm -hmm. It's going to give you something mm -hmm. to actually take action on. Yeah. Yeah, and that's like I tell you the most common thing with emotional eating, and it's the most common answer that I give with clients who have emotional eating is that. When you ask your brain a question, it needs to find the answer. Yeah. So when you're emotionally eating, which I'm sure for a lot of people is a is a big 2018 goal to sort of mm. get moved through that and, and, and over that, um, that habit, is that you're on autopilot. So you're emotionally eating, something's going on. You might feel anxious, you might feel lonely, you might feel depressed, you mm. might um, just feel low self-worth, but you go into this autopilot mode of just eating, 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 eating without asking those better questions. Okay, what's really going on for me? Or something as simple as putting your hand on your belly and saying, belly, do you really need this? Mm -hmm. And that, it's not really about, it's the quality of the question, yes, but it's also that your brain has to find the answer, mm -hmm. which trips you out of that autopilot mode. Mm -hmm. So 100% right, ask those better questions, but also start to get mindful about what questions you are currently mm -hmm. asking yourself and what habits are spurred on by those questions. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. So we could talk about day about mindset there's so many steps so many things we could do let's just review those number one guys set clear goals number two surround yourself with amazing people people that are going to help you be better not pull you down number three get clear on your uncompromising standards you need to have a list of even wins and eliminate uh, the except wins and then of course ask incredible questions because if you're asking great questions you'll focus on solutions rather than keeping stagnant guys i hope that really helps mm. but let's talk about nutrition let's talk about <laughs> nutrition energy yeah vitality Udabha, vitality Fuel. Fuel. deliciousness <laughs> all that good stuff <laughs> jenna yes what are your hot tips okay. for 2018 let's brainstorm let's help these let's people be brainstorm. better so i think the biggest thing that i want to put out there is this concept of balance Pause. We often talk about, <laughs> we often talk about it. What is balance? What is balance? Is exactly. it even a thing? Is it a thing? Because there, and, and you know, it's January, so everybody's wanting to get fitter, lose weight, all their goals. And in order to get there, this um, concept of balance is really promoted. So I would pose a better question to you then. If you're out of balance and you of you start putting in place this concept of balance into your life with your training and with your eating um, and with your mindset, 
is that going to get you to where you want to be or is it going to keep you out of balance? Mm. And I would bet that if you're out of balance, being balanced is going to keep you out of balance. Whereas you need to be 110% on point committed for a certain period of time to get to your goal. You need to decide that you're going to get to that goal, be out of balance in that way. And then you can afford to be a bit more lenient with your diet, with your training, with your mind, not really your mindset. That'll just up level to a whole other level anyway. But really shifting that mindset of this concept of balance i think to me anyway it's a it's absurd i, I think it's going to keep you where you're at what what's, you guys the, think? what's the definition of balance this is why i always get confused about it when people say i you know i want balance but mm. really what they're trying to say is i want comfort i want easy you know yeah. balance is different for everyone yeah but what I, the way i also look at balance is that you can get balance eventually right mm. when your comfort zone stretches and grows right so we always talk about the comfort zone in the beginning. You know that you have to leave your comfort zone in order to improve and get better, which means your standards mm. increase. But eventually, that standard will become your new comfort zone. Mm. But what happens is, if you stay in that comfort zone, which to a lot of people is balance, mm. you're not going to keep improving and getting better and better. So I think that we need to flip the concept on its head, and we mm. also need to be really realistic about it. And, and I, and I challenge you if you're looking at this going, no, balance is important. I'd say just define balance for yourself. Yeah. And then look at what that looks like and say, okay, does that get results? Mm. Because at the end of the day, we can use whatever word we want, but either does it get us results or doesn't it get us results? Yeah. Mm. And if the balance doesn't get results, well then, and your goal is to get results, you know you've got to change something, <laughs> yeah, yeah? Yeah. And then once you're clear on the definition, you can start improving and, and potentially changing the definition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, for, from everyone I've sort of spoken to who's gone through the transformation program or, or looking to, balance for them is, I want to hit a plateau. Mm. Like that's, mm. and, and that's because that's what I've seen the progress uh, go through is, I want that plateau again. I want it where it's nothing is changing. Mm. And, and I mean, th- th- that's, I guess, one definition of balance mm. that I've seen people have. And, and it's like, well, do you really want to be on that plateau? How long do you want to be on that plateau for? Mm. Don't you want to upgrade your life? Don't you want to keep growing and living? Mm. And isn't that the point? Like, if you're, you're either green and growing or ripe and rotting, right? So <laughs> if yeah. you're in that plateau for long, that balance you're going to start to rot you're going to start dipping and declining and you're going to feel that pain again and then you're like okay i want to, i want balance again so mm. that sort of slight slight one slight yeah, yeah i agree project, yeah. yeah i think that when when you look at progress in any facet i think that everything goes through cycles so even though like for six weeks for nine and six for example we know that nine and six you're resetting you're going to be focused going hard you're not looking for balance in that six weeks because you're looking for incredible progress massive learnings along the way and then of course eventually you'll pull back for a couple of weeks and recover and do more um zen type stuff but then you know you you got to full throttle it to get further results so i think instead of chasing a life of constant balance you should just be looking at life as seasonal Mm -hmm. and say there's going to be set weeks where i'm going to be going all out Mm. and really challenging and stretching myself mentally emotionally physically and then i might have a week or two where i find some comfort and balance right Mm. in a resourceful way of Mm. course and then i turn it back on again so the way i always uh structure my training and my growth and learning is is in seasonal fashion because that way it's sustainable Mm. and i can do it over a long long period of time Mm. Mm. and i think after you've done that a couple of times you'll notice that your brain and your body starts to seek those moments of challenges yes i think when you start something and you think of well i like i I have to remove this balance in my life it's really overwhelming and really daunting But you get to the, you know, eight month period or the 12 month period and you suddenly realize you're craving that because you know that when you hit that point of challenge and hard and sacrifice that the next week you are going to be so much stronger. You're going to feel Mm. amazing. Things are going to be running smoother. And it is that seasonal thing. So really starting to crave that, which is an amazing um, point to get to with your mindset. There's no change without challenge. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. And it's sort of your comfort zone doesn't expand unless you have challenge. Yeah. Right? So your comfort zone expands organically as well. So it's sort of uh, uh, stages of expansion and contraction, expansion mm-hmm. and contraction, expansion and contraction. So what was once outside of your comfort zone, you mm-hmm. know, 
you slowly get to that by challenging yourself, by doing things that's uncomfortable. Mm. Um, and, and when you keep doing that, then you know your comfort zone expands so much that when you thought, oh, I couldn't, I didn't, I couldn't do ten burpees. Like, what the hell is that? Like, yeah. and now ten burpees is just your warm up, or, you know, like <laughs> part of your warm up. Yeah. Um, it's because you've expanded, and it's because you've gone through that challenge mm. plateau challenge plateau challenge plateau and it's sort of up leveling your life and, and mm. going through those seasons mm, yeah i agree yeah. and i think that just define what balance is some people yeah. balance is going to be a cheat meal every night other people's balance is three times a week like mm. what is it to you define it but don't take our word for it yeah i'd suggest right. ask someone who has the results that you want mm-hmm. and if ask them if they achieve that through balance and I don't think uh, you'll find anyone that has actually achieved incredible things with mm. consistent balance mm. all the way through. Yeah, Just my definitely. Opinion. No, yeah. I agree. And I think that leads on to the second point that you really want to focus on, which is this notion of experimentation. So a uh, really common question is um, ties in with balance. Okay, if I want to incorporate a cheat meal into my week or my month, um, my regime, how do I do that? And just so we're clear, I call it a free meal because it's so much more positive. You're not cheating. It's just something that you choose to eat. Now, I think underlying all this sort of overwhelm, feelings of overwhelm and anxiety that can come with having a meal that's off plan or, or that doesn't fit your notion of um, way of eating is that you'll put 10 kilos on overnight, which is just not the case. But in that moment, we get so overwhelmed that that's what's going to happen. So approach this new year in 2018 with the notion of experimentation. So you might experiment with balance, which might be um, committing to a certain way of eating seven days a week and twice a week you'll eat whatever you want. So balance, include that free meal. Do that for three weeks experiment with it try not to be overwhelmed you know the worst case scenario is that in three weeks it hasn't worked and you can change direction you can come and seek some support about which direction to go and um and that can be really helpful does that resonate absolutely 100 percent. yeah mm. totally what do you yeah. think about yeah it's i would say that this experimentation you if you're just starting like let's say you're 96 you can't do this. Don't do this. Like, yeah. No, um, just follow the damn plan. Follow the damn plan. Right? So, follow the plan. So experimentation. Yeah. We are not giving permission right now <laughs> yeah. for free meals. We are just yeah. talking. Experimentation is for those who've gone on the journey. That yeah. first one. Right? So you have, you, you earn the right, let's say, to, to go yeah. on this experimentation journey, which is the next journey. Yeah. So that's what I would add in that, you know, you, you've got to work for this. You've got that's, to, yeah. yeah. That's why I did a free meal as well. In, yeah, yeah have, you is I, uh, have I earned mm. those carbs through the week? Have I worked hard? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have I earned this very healthy peach yeah. that I'm about to eat? Right? Yeah. And does yeah. in the moment, like, does it sit well with you? I always mm. sit to say to clients, if you're going to go into that meal, n- understanding, and this leads into my third point about nutrition, but understanding that that meal is going to make you feel guilty, it's going to make you feel bloated, it's going to reduce your energy, you're going to wake up with a hangover and you don't want to do that, don't eat the meal. Mm. Like It's really, really simple. Don't eat the meal. So my third point is understand, and this is kind of what we were talking about with even wins. So in Nutrition Mastery, we talk about your list of non-negotiables. Mm. So having a list of non-negotiables is going to guide you in those free meals or guide you into your 2018 weight loss journey or sculpting journey, whatever it is, um, with your choices and decisions. And I mean... Um, how grateful and a privilege is it that we get to choose what we eat? Mm. Like it's just, I think we take that for granted. We can go to a supermarket and purchase whatever we want. It's a privilege that we get to choose what to put into our bodies. Mm. And so I guess understanding and being grateful for that privilege and then listing your non-negotiables. So that might be that you are gluten-free. You understand that when you consume gluten, that might make you feel foggy in the brain, um, bloated, achy, uh, pain, cramps. So understand that going into a dish of pasta is going to make you feel that way. And then the next day, you're also going to feel really, really guilty. Do you then choose to eat that meal? And if you choose to eat that meal 
accept the consequences. So accept that you're going to feel foggy and, mm. and crampy and bloated and you're not allowed to feel guilty for it because you've, you've accepted the consequences and it's your choice to eat that meal. So I think listing your non-negotiables is integral for being a guide, like a guide, guideposts along 2018 and going mm. forward. Mm. Um, and, and they will be ever changing and evolving and experiment with those non-negotiables and see how they fit for you. Yeah. 100% agree. Can yeah. I add to that? Yeah. Sort of going back to the bus metaphor, yeah. right? If you're doing a nine and six, it's pretty much one bus ride from A to B. When you finish and you got the results, mm. now you're on this experimentation journey, it's going from B to C, but you're, you've got the options of detours. Mm. Now, if you go on a detour, if you choose to experiment with um, gluten, with, with dairy and all that sort of mm. um, so, you know, things outside of, let's say, the, the plan, you're going to take longer to get to C, mm. you know, right? So because you're taking a detour. Yeah. And so it's up to you. So your results will come a lot later or a, a bit later, depending on how many detours you choose to make. Mm. Uh, but mm. that's on you. That's your, that's in your control. Yeah. You're, remember, you're driving your bus. Mm. So yeah. yeah, take those detours. Don't feel guilty for them. And just know that that journey is going to take a little bit longer in terms of your results. Mm. Yeah, I agree. And what I love that you just brought up then, Jenna, was being grateful for food, right? Now, we often say this. When was the last time you were cooking and you looked at the food and you were like, thinking of the benefits and how freaking awesome it is mm. that you can eat this green lush food that's going to give you energy and health yeah. or that you get to cook these eggs or chicken or whatever it is but it's all healthy clean food and but think of the benefits that it's giving you in comparison yeah. to people who are always chasing convenience mm. over health and vitality and everyone wants to you know rather go downstairs and get maccas because it's more convenient mm. rather than looking at the food and saying okay cool it's going to take me a little bit of effort to cook it mm. but i'm so grateful for the benefits and the energy and how i'm going to feel tomorrow yeah. the impact that has across my life when you start recognizing and being grateful for the the good things in life mm. and the things the simple things like food yeah. it changes the game yeah. And it makes you stick to it a whole lot longer. Yeah. And I'm just going to add on to what you were saying, Andy, about the convenience of food. That is a perception. Mm. That is not like, Macca's is not more convenient. Mm. Going to the supermarket and getting a stick of celery, carrot, cucumber and a tin of tuna mm. is still convenient. Mm. So it's really about that mindset. It's, it it's so integral. Yeah. That is, even, uh, to me, that's more convenient mm. than going to Macca's yeah. and placing an order mm. and then feeling guilty yeah. and then feeling sick and then not being able to be a good mom or a good employee yeah, or a yeah. good friend mm -hmm. like you, is the convenience in the moment or the perceived convenience in the moment worth the long-term yeah, convenience i'd say the convenience that you're buying is going to cost you a lot more in the future yeah um, right? like, mm -hmm. it's just yeah with all the lack of energy the the disconnect that you mm -hmm. might have with exactly. the people yeah. Yeah. be flatulence yeah. Those sorts of nasty things that um, you know uh, you, mm -hmm. your convenience is mm -hmm. buying. It's actually costing you. So costing you a lot of money. Yeah. 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 guys, if you're watching, tag a friend that needs to hear this. We're talking the UI way philosophy, mindset, nutrition, and mm. training. We've covered some gold today. Mm. We've still got more to come. Yeah. So if you're watching, tag a friend, press like. What's your next tip? My next tip. So what have we covered? Covered balance, mm. the concept of balance. What is that to you? We've covered experimentation and we've also covered non negotiables. So I think the yeah. third thing is essentially our UI nutrition philosophy, mm. which I I'm guided by, we are all guided by, and um, we just get so excited and passionate about it. And at a really, really simple level, it's eating real food. Mm. Eating real food so that we have a food as medicine approach. Mm. We can really put our bodies into a healing space, reset our hormones, reset our appetite, reset our mindset, um, so that we can feel good and live that vibrant, energetic life that we all really want but we just are so overwhelmed to get there so i think coming into you why is so amazing as a starting point and to advance your knowledge in nutrition because there's so much information out there you know uh, do we go 
low carb? Do we go high carb? Do we go vegan? Do we go vegetarian? Do we eliminate... If it fits your macros. If it fits your macros. So like, what's styles. gonna be a good fit for you? And as a starting point, we cater to all people. Um, but at the heart of that is just eating real food so that we can reset everything yeah. and then up level and upgrade you from there. Mm. Um, and it's a, always, it's an adding on approach, you know, mm. just keep tweaking and adding and experimenting after that process as to what is going to be amazing. Yeah, and because our, so true, and because our philosophy is mindset, nutrition and training, mm. we need to take into account how each philosophy or each section of that impacts the other. And people often say like, why don't you just do it for two macros? Then I can have, you know, burgers for the week or I can have ice cream, you know, five days a week and, and still lose yeah. weight. And my, my answer always is, that's fine. You might have to lose weight, but are you at your optimum level of health? Are mm. you, how is that affecting your mindset and emotional stability? How is and that, yeah, affecting your long-term health? Yeah. And at the end of the day, whole foods, it's about not only losing weight, losing weight is, is, is part of the equation here, but the overall equation is how do you feel, right? Mm. How motivated are you? Which comes from often what you're reading, etc. Mm. And and what is your mindset? What is your emotional stability? Yeah. What What's your cholesterol like? All of these things start to come into play mm. when you're eating whole foods. Yeah, mm. and I think, is it Sean Croxton that mm. says we want to get you healthy so that you can lose weight, not lose weight so you can get healthy. Exactly. And also think about the way that you want to live for the next 5 10 20 years. Do you want to do you want to live counting every single calorie, calorie. <laughs> in your day? If you do, great. That's fine. That's your journey. Um, but if you don't, the UI philosophy is just amazing for that. And I think to there's there's an appreciation that the food that you eat will help you lose weight and it will make you look aesthetically better so to speak, mm. in the social conventional way. Mm. But there's this other aspect of nutrition that is always put to the side, and that is that it really is gives you the nutrients that feed all of your pathways in your body, from happiness to gut health to brain function to digestive function, immune health. The food that you eat creates your body. It actually creates your body. It also creates your mood. 95% and it changes daily depending on the study you read, of serotonin, which yeah. is your happy hormone, is produced in your gut. Mm -hmm. Effectively, 95% of your happiness is determined by the state of your gut health. Mm -hmm. And I really ask you to get in tune with your gut health because as, days, as the days of 2018 roll on, it's gonna be very easy to get stuck up in your head, mm -hmm. stuck into your tasks to be done, all of the jobs to do at home, grocery shopping, whatever it is. Yeah and get disconnected from your body. Yeah. So ask those better questions. Mm. Get in tune with your body. What is that feeling? The amount of people that I say, ask them, are you bloated? And they don't know. Mm. Like, you need to start to understand what f the feeling in your body is and to be able to put a label on it and communicate that so that you can understand that that uncomfortability doesn't need to be there and that there is a way of getting healthy and aesthetic results and feeling optimal and amazing for the rest of your have life all of it have the best of all of yeah. it eat good whole foods lose weight feel great and that's why i believe the ui way is the best way yeah yeah, yeah. i like to keep it <laughs> even simpler than that like for me just to, in my head it's basically you are what you eat yeah. mm. right so yeah. if you're eating really good food whole food mm. food that feeds your body mm. then what does that say about you mm. you're, you're going to be a good person you're going mm. because you're happier yeah, yeah. Right? you're yeah. more energetic yeah. you can do mm. more be more mm. right mm. so you are what you eat yeah, yeah. If you're eating bad stuff mm. you know what is that turning you into mm. who are you being yeah. at the end of the day like when you are eating stuff that's not necessarily great right? yeah like, and i think um like really basically start looking at your food and going okay well how do i want to eat so if you eat something that looks and tastes and feels heavy stodgy um really kind of dead on the plate i suppose that's how you're going to feel if you eat something that's vibrant and colorful and crunchy and alive and zesty well that's how you're going to feel 
So, moral of the story, add zest to every meal. <laughs> zesty. Eat whole foods. Nutritious, foods. dense. Foods. And what does that Nutrient mean? Nutrient-dense foods. So, eating whole foods, let's, let's give it a definition. Eating whole foods that are real from nature essentially means that they're unadulterated. So, if you get a potato and you eat that potato, that's whole food. If you get a potato crisp in a packet, that's man-made. That's been adulterated and processed. So that's not a real food. So you really want to focus on produce and foods that are as close to their natural form as possible. And then your body knows what to do with them too. Because if you're adding in all these additives and colors and flavors, your body can, it doesn't really know what to do with them. So it kind of, it stores them as toxins in fat cells. So it's kind of like when your mum comes in and cleans your room and she just shoves <laughs> all your crap into the closet. That's what your body's doing. It's just shoving all your crap into your fat cells um, until you go and clean out your body. Um, My mum yeah. would have thrown it out. <laughs> well, she, she wouldn't have stored it. She, she would have just thrown it in the bin. That's so true, right? So yeah. again, choose foods. And if you're part of our community, every program, all our members get the food lists and the, the yeah. nutritional plan. So it's all based on whole, whole foods. So yeah. whenever never in doubt, go back to the, to the program. Yeah, and the support and the guidance and all the information. Like Absolutely. you're just so supported in our programs. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, the last one. Mm is that are you ready <laughs> hold on hold on so through using those natural foods we're really encouraging our clients to become fat burners so being a fat burner is more than just you losing weight i like to look at it in terms of um, cogs and they just fit and they turn really nicely and smoothly that's the energy system that we are really encouraging our clients to utilize with their bodies so um, this, there's a fire analogy that's commonly used in the nutrition and health industry in terms of your fuel sources with your body. So you've got two fuel sources. You've got carbohydrates and they turn into glycogen in the body. And then you've got fat and that can be used as fat or ketones in the body for energy. Now, when you start a fire, um, you use paper and, t and kindling mm. to get that fire going. And it, what does it do? It burns really hot, really, really quickly, and then it dies down. So you're having to add more kindling and more tweaks onto the fire. Now, that is your carbohydrate consumption. So when you're using carbohydrates predominantly, so really processed carbohydrates and sugars um, into your into your body which is your your metabolic fire then you're constantly a slave to that so ask yourself the question do you constantly get energy dips do you constantly get cravings are you constantly after that next meal can you not last five to six hours between meals without mental um, clarity compromisation so when you stick a log of wood on the fire what does it do it burns really long really smoothly and and can burn all night if you if it's big enough that's your fat source so that fat source is really going to give you a long burning um, energy source it's going to be smooth it's going to be like those cogs are turning over and you more important you're not a slave to that metabolic fire you can dip into your own body fat stores and utilize those for energy which is going to give you mental clarity it's going to give you weight loss benefits and so 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 much more which we talk about in all of our programs and really educate our clients on that aspect um, and I think that that's the way to go like that's something that I'm really proud about with our programs is that when you feel that fuel burning through your body and you're not a slave to it you just capable of so much more and you've got more brain space to think about Damn straight. So true. what you want to achieve your mm. dreams your family mm. dreams your career goals and mm. everything so i think yeah we really encourage people to become fat burners mm. with them um, or people's bodies yeah. to become fat mm. burners in our programs and yeah that was my last point absolutely yeah love it love so it. very true kimbo yeah do you have any final words to our awesome Fit Fam and everyone listening on how they can make 2018 the best year yet mm. using the Huawei philosophy? Okay, just keep coming here. I, this is your tribe, this is your mm. community, and I'll say this is your family, mm. the one that loves you. Because sometimes, you know, uh, some, let's just say some family isn't, aren't great, but this family, particularly you, Y family, loves you. This is your tribe, we've got your back. That's one of our values, it's like our code of honor, you know, we love our clients unconditionally. 
right? So c keep coming back here and feel supported because you are. Mm -hmm. And with your mindset, with your nutrition, with your training, focus on those three pillars to make sure that you are running optimally and we'll help you take care of the rest, right? Mm -hmm. So this is why, the, the reason why you can come here is because so you can feel supported mm -hmm. and we will, you know, help you to be the ultimate you. Uh, it's in the name, right? It's ultimate you. So mm -hmm. this is what we want to transform you guys into. Mm -hmm. So keep rocking up here. Keep coming. Absolutely. Keep showing up. Absolutely. Jenna, you are a nutritionist. <laughs> Any final words for our amazing Fit fam? Oh, on the spot. Commit to yourself. Nice. Respect yourself. Nice and give your body that fuel that it needs to mm. just thrive and become mm. the ultimate you. Mm. Um, you deserve it um, and you are worthy of it mm. and never forget that it is your choice to put something in your mouth. Mm. If you fall over, trip, face first into a pizza, okay. Mm. But every other time you have a choice to consume that food. Mm. Agree. And my final tip is live with the truth that your past does not dictate your future. It doesn't matter what's happened last year or the years before, how many times you've tried and not succeeded. Make this year the year that truly defines your life moving forward. Make this year the absolute best year you can. And what we're going to be doing with all of you guys is giving you so much content, so much love, so much information. You've just got to run with the ball and take it. If you are part of our community and you're within our four walls, you know we're going to do everything to change your life. And if you are listening to this anywhere in the world, keep on listening because we're here to help and here to serve. And this is what the UI philosophy is all about. Mm -hmm. So guys, I want to thank you for joining me. The UI team, Kimbo Slice, Jenna, myself, yeah. <laughs> and... Thank you for listening, guys. We've got so much more cool stuff happening. We're going to be doing mindset and nutrition podcasts weekly, giving guys the best content possible. And uh, I really hope that you have started the year right. right? Let's make 2018 the best one ever. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. And we'll see you on the next episode of the UI Way podcast. See ya. Bye. See you guys.